Praise the Lord. You got us on. Well, hope all you go, Debbie, before you take them. You got you got us on, right? That's great. That you was able to record that. You wasn't able to record that. We, huh? We need to. We need when they turn on, get it turned on. When I let's go ahead and turn it on because God has prophetic messages. It's His timing. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, come up here and get the mic because I was going to tell you you need to learn. So can I speak something? Get a mic. That's okay. Uh, go ahead and do it again. Turn me on. And get the mic because this lady, no, she didn't know what I was going to talk about first thing this morning. The lady we've been praying for for her baby that has cancer. What was their name again? One more time. God knows. God knows the name. Evely. Evely. Well, the Lord, when you get in touch with her and have her to watch the beginning of this message, tell, tell Becky she's talking over there. We need to get in touch with her and have her to watch the beginning of this message because I asked and made sure it was okay to show a picture of the baby across the Internet. Why? It's because you didn't know what I was going to talk about. But I want her to share again about her losing her baby. Now, doesn't mean this baby is going to die. Okay? Let's get this point across. But this is, this is something that the Lord is, is orchestrating himself. So go ahead and share what your, your heart, what the Lord did with your child. Let me see. Green light. Pink. Pink. You got to put it up closer. Sorry. Okay, well, like, like I was saying, um, my son, yesterday would have been his birthday. He would have been 34 years old. But the thing is, he passed, he changed residence and went home in 2003. He was at a Christian youth camp praising God whenever the Lord decided it was his time. Yeah, I said it was the Lord because I'm going to tell you, no matter what the circumstances or whatever happens, God is the one who breathes life, and God is the only one who can take it away. Satan can cause problems, okay? But you don't go home until God says, it's, I'm ready for you to come home. That's what I believe with all my heart. And so no matter the circumstances, you can still praise God because I'm here to tell you, as long as you allow God to take and give you the peace and the healing and the knowing of what it is that, you know, you're going through, God will help you through it. You've got to learn to accept it and to receive it. I could take and be in my misery if I wanted to. But you know what? I choose life. Because God has given me life, and I'm here to tell you right now that as long as you stay close to God and you accept God's help and God's comfort and God's peace, he will see it to you through it. And another thing I wanted to let y'all know, God, know God's, God says he's not going to put more on you than you can handle as long as you're relying on him and trusting in him. Because, you know, I can tell you to this day, God has let me see my child still at youth camp praising him. I don't see him in my head as gone. He's just went to camp, and he's still praising God. And yes, he is. He's still praising God. And you know what else? You know, God is still with me. I haven't missed church. I haven't run from God. I turn closer to God. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to hold on to God. You cannot turn loose. And before we get into the message, this is the reason I was wanting her to repeat it again. I'm going to teach on some of this stuff, how the enemy steals, kills, and destroy in a further message than what I have. I'm still on the ark. But this baby's picture, I get mad. Some people, babies I prayed for, they passed on. I reached out to people that don't even go to this church before when they lost their child. 
the Lord give me a word to speak to him. I write him a letter. But this child we've been praying for for a while. And while Sister Jackie showed me a picture, the Spirit of the Lord hits me. And I, I'm, I'm quickened by the Holy Spirit. I was prophesied over to say I'll be quickened by the Holy Ghost. I'll be in a, a, a action. I got to move right when he speaks. I can't wait. I can't hardly pray about it. It's move, obey. Because if it's good, it's coming from the throne. And I believe this child's going to be healed 100%. Because my father is teaching me for the world, not just for this church, but for the world. I'm not, as I said, I don't come here to just play church. If my work, God says it, I said, God, you found a vessel that will believe it. There's no more doubt. I know that I know that I know that God hears me when I pray. And I know that God said, I'm the God that healeth thee. And it's a past tense. And I know, and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith until I go home myself. And I will not die. This flesh will die, but I will not die. I'm going to live forever in the house of the Lord. But then when you attack these children, this is why it's very important that parents in the church need to understand to what your children's been taught in classes, what your children's studying, what your children looking over the internet, whatever it may be. You are, as long as they ain't an adult, you're responsible to look over them children. So we are taking authority in the name of Jesus because God said it's better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and cast yourself in the deepest of the sea than mess with my little ones. Oh, we are, we'll say that for our own little babies. Oh, our precious little thing. But when you get somebody else, you need to let the Holy Ghost put the same feeling for someone else than it would be your own household. And I'm, I don't like how the enemy attacks these children. I despise it in the name of Jesus. That baby wants to live and have a normal life like every other little child. So I asked my daughter to bring my granddaughter up as a point of contact. And we're going to pray, church, for a supernatural healing. I'm not doing this to put on a show. I'm just obeying the spirit of the living God. That this baby will be touched from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. You're all right, baby. You're all right. In the name of Jesus, God Jehovah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father, I'm doing and obeying what I feel led in my heart to do. So, Father, this baby, in the name of the living God, you know what hospital, you know where she's at. But, Father, right now, in the name of Jehovah, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I, in the name of Jesus, christened this child with the blood of the living God. Hata shitalaboko in every cell that's in her body that contradicts your word will be made whole. In the name of the living God, to bring glory and honor to the Savior of the world, in Jesus' mighty name, and my baby girl said, amen. amen. Say, amen. Say amen. Right here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen means so be it. Praise the Lord. Ha! Ha! Praise the Lord. Well, glory. Good seeing y'all. Good seeing. Welcome everybody by the internet. I hate the devil. Don't come around my house. With your devils. Amen. 
in Jesus' name. I'm going to believe it. And I ain't going to pet him. I hate him and his imps, demons. Oh, you ain't supposed to hate nobody. Well, go find somebody to love a devil and leave this place. If you want to love devils, go on. I hate the devil. God said he hates evil. Read your word. Hate it. Getting quiet in this Presbyterian church, you know. Glory to God. Help me, Jesus. I cannot stand to see sickness and death and fear and evil strive, enemy, jealousy. Oh, what this word says. Adultery, fornication, lying, cheating, killing, stealing. It's from the devil. Hallelujah. That's why God says get aboard the ark. We've been talking about the ark. We Last Sunday, if you watch the message from last Sunday and get caught up, but God has put in my heart that barely scratching the service this time for the church. If you call yourself a child of God, it's time to be one. It's time to get aboard Jesus Christ and stand up in your own two feet and take authority that your father gave you the authority of and get aboard his ark. Quit letting the devil put in fear on you. There's things in this life is uh, everything. Yes, Lord. Everything in this life is temporal. You can try to be a national championship. You can do all the things in this world thinking that it's only that what matters, but it's will pass too. It's only temporal. And if you get your eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's why God says, I will build my church. But God himself can't even build a church unless the people get their eyes upon him and him alone. That's it. I will build my church where the gates of hell cannot, will not prevail against her, the word says. It's time for me and you to get aboard the ark. It's time for us to get aboard Jesus Christ and put both feet in and hold on. Because the enemy's going to keep deceiving this world until he takes it down. And don't you think with all the prophecies that comes out with you about the United States and people do not take and get aboard the Lord Jesus Christ, that it will come to pass. All prophecies don't come to pass. Uh-oh, going to upset some religious folks around here. If God said it, it'll happen. Well, guess what? If you sit there and on the couch and when God tells you to move and you don't move, come and pick me up, God, take me. You want me to go to my neighbor's house? Come and get me. It will never happen. Because God ain't going to pick you up. If he did, he's going to do it himself. <laughs> move on down the line, ain't we, Lord? So, it's time to get aboard the Lord Jesus Christ. Get aboard the ark. Because the enemy is going to do one more scare tactic. One more manifestation before November to try to get peoples down and out and confused and scared spitless. And if you ain't aboard the ark, you too will be swept up in this. You too will be swept up and believe a lie and be damned.
This is why my job is to do what God tells me to do, as he said in Noah, told Noah, build me an ark. I see the evil. I see the corruption. I see mankind falling apart. And if I don't shorten the days, my very elect will be deceived. The church will start believing the lie. If I don't start doing something. That's what God says. That's what is in his word. So God has prepared me. A little bit of knowledge. About the hidden. Some of the hidden manna in Noah. The story about Noah. In the book of Genesis. We left off with. God remembers his promises. That was number two. We're on number three. Number three. The story of Noah, some of the hidden, hidden manna was to believe God and obey what God says. A lot of people believe God this morning. A lot of people believe there's a God. But there's a millions that's not obeying. If Noah didn't obey God, him too would have been caught up into the flood. Him too would have been wiped out. Him too would have believed a lie. Him too would have been destroyed. And his family. So God is beginning to use prophets more today than he has in this span of life. You know, a lot of people just didn't want to hear, thought prophecy, uh, the prophets was, was back in the old day. You know, they, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, a baby's coming, a baby's coming. That was the prophets. You read the Old Testament. What made it change? Nothing. Because God, Jesus Christ, was the true prophet that came and fulfilled prophecy and then gave prophecy. Now, when he says that I, meaning himself, will do thus, thus, and thus, you might well take it to the bank. But if he tells you, Josh, I am going to use you in the last days that the world have never seen before, that doesn't mean Josh to sit right there and lick a lollipop. Because Josh, it won't happen. Even though God, Jehovah, is telling you, I'm going to use you in these, it won't happen. You have to fall in love with God and seek his obedience to do what I tell you to do. That's the difference. That's the difference. That type of prophecy is when I say, I'm going to use you. But Lord, when he says, I am going to cut down and bring a flood. There's no prayer. <laughs> There's no teacher. There ain't no devil going to stop it. When he says, it is my time, saith the Lord, you might as well go ahead and get ready for it. Amen. It's going to be his time. Amen. He'll send a host of angels. He'll do things that people will... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he has no respect of person. If Tim don't get aboard the ark, Tim will be swept away. This is why it's very important to, to listen in the last day as we end today. Well, people says, well, you had 14 years, so God has no respect of person. They twist it. Just let the devil just deceive them, deceive them or have 14. He'll give me 14 years. Believe in a lie and be damned then. Because he gave Noah and them, if you do the study on it, took 100 to 120 years for the ark to be completed. That's a lot of warnings, ain't it? And we've been in it, hmm, what? Probably eight years now, probably 2015, 16, somewhere in there. 
God has been getting stirring up the prophets, stirring up people, telling what we have to get aboard. We have to focus on the Lord. Your life, American life, is not going to be like it used to be. Oh, that went over. Whoosh. The enemy is going to take and keep on keeping on until he brings her down or God and God's people step up to the plate. Because that's why the enemy wants this country as bad as he does. Because usually when the America's economy goes down, the world economy goes down. When the American people start moving away from God, the whole world start moving away from God. I think it was, don't quote me on it, unless the Lord really can help me with my memory, Father, that I think back in the early 90s or so, they started sending missionaries to America. America used to have been ahead sending missionaries across the world and teach the gospel. Now, missionaries is coming to America to tell her, repent, telling her to turn to God. Come on, somebody. It's been many years. Many years. And now we got to believe what the prophet of God's people is saying and have faith in what God says. If God says, be prepare, 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 get aboard the ark, get aboard me, you better start preparing because a flood of evil is coming. As I said, I've seen things that's going to make COVID look like nothing. And, if, and, 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 and Lord, and now we take COVID, we can't even come to church no more because we got the internet. We don't have to. Well, what? You don't even aboard the ark. You're going to be beating the doors down here after a while. Because God says, if you're not up under my blood, and be obedient. What do you mean? I mean, son, you better listen, be sensitive to the Lord. If you don't post to get on an airplane, you better not get on that airplane. You, this is where we're getting to. If God tells you don't walk into Walmart today, go to Dollar General, you better go to Dollar General. Because the enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you don't know his voice, how to be stay aboard the ark, us two will be caught up in this stuff. Because millions and millions of people has flood in here. And they're all not looking for the American dream. Allow the enemy to come in to plant bombs. Allow the enemy to come in to do the work. Let me, oh, I know it's going to upset some of y'all. Shouldn't be talking politics from the pulpit, but you're in the wrong house. Because if, let me tell you something. The ones that's leading the nation, read your book. All the kings of Israel that turned from God brought the nation down. And all the kings that turned to God brought the nation up. It's in your word. Pick up this book. Yes, Lord. Pick up. Your, you got your phone. Download the Bible on the app. But we need to believe God and obey what God says. Because in Genesis 6, verse 22. Yeah, I feel a little, I feel a little angry spirit today. A good anger. Yeah, boldness. I'm, I don't like the devil. All of your babies in the hospitals and sick. All your peop, people are suffering and dying. People is, is having relationship problems. People is, is confused. The devil's got them confused. And we, have we prayed God's non-confusion this week? Have we bind devils in the name of Jesus this week? I don't want a show of hands. But this is your place. This is your jobs. Hallelujah. So Noah did everything exactly as God has commanded him. 
Hebrews 11, verse 7. So, you know, when Noah told, when God told Noah how to build it, what kind of animals to put on the board, what food to bring, what kind of food to use for sacrifices, what kind of food to feed the animals. I mean, down to the dotted ladder and the cross, dotted I's and cross T's. He had to do it exactly. So when God talks to me and you saying, come to my house, come to my house, we'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. That ain't what he's talking about there. You better start learning how to do it exactly what God tells you to do. Because when it does, you're going to find out in this teaching, when the door is shut, it's shut. It's going to be shut. And it was by faith Noah built a large boat to save this, his family from the flood. He obeyed God. He warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and received the righteous that comes by faith. Noah told the people that the flood was coming. Warned the people. People seen him building the ark. Why is everybody, everybody see Pete, the cars lined up here coming to church every Sunday? Why are they going to church every Sunday? My God, they hypocrite like I am. It's what the world said. They see the signs, but they're not obeying them. They're ignoring them. We must too have to have faith. And believe God and obey. No matter how long it seems like it's taken. No matter how long. As this was this baby. He's been sick. No matter how long. Mom and daddy. Don't give up on God. Amen. Let me tell you something. You know God can take a person. That's been cremated. And bring them back to life. One little clap. Oh, he's out of his mind. He must have been drinking last night. Yeah, I've been drinking the Holy Ghost, the good wine. I believe my Father God. I believe that days that he said signs and wonders shall follow those who believe. I'm a believer, Jack. Because if I get thrown in jail, I'm going to pray for us, Creek, as Paul and Silas and if they come in, FBI coming up to my house, I'm going to say, if I'm a man of God, you say I am, I'm going to be Elijah. Woof. Fire. Come down. <laughs> You're a man of God. You say you are. Don't come to my house because I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to believe God. Now, if God don't answer it, I'm until he tells me what I didn't. But I know what God has put in my heart. Prepared me for the days. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. You just do what I tell you to do. boy. Whew. And he put me in some situations. That uh, uh, this flesh don't like. You do what I tell you to do. As I did Noah. And I will show them your God. I believe a day is coming that God's going to put me in a place as Elijah to where I'll be able to mock the devil and all their people follow me. Call him out a little loud. Holler. He must be gone to the bathroom. Read your book. It's in the Bible. People say, man, he's nuts. You ain't reading the book. He taught them. Y'all go first. Bring your witches. Bring your angel dust. Bring it on. Now y'all do y'all's work in front of the whole world. And the one who answers by fire is the God we will serve. And they, you know, they make their fire strike a match behind the back. And oh, oh I, have to, I, don't, I, I feel the Lord pulling me back on some of this. Some of y'all, some of y'all, like, oh Lord, let me tell you, I, I'm, I know what God's preparing me for. One that's real fire. That's why Elijah took the water, the bucket of water, and put it on the wood, put it in the ditches, 
you know, put it all with nobody having an excuse. And he wouldn't over here striking matches trying to make fire. He, all he did then says, Father, I know you hear me when I pray. Let this be done unto you, them today that they'll know that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Bible says all of a sudden it was a thunder. <laughs> when the fire licked up the wood, licked, uh, burnt the wood, and all the water in the trenches, it sucked it up. <laughs> and fire, water's supposed to put out fire, you know. Sucked it up. And the Bible says the bells and witches and the bell that worship Baal and, and all the false prophets and all of it bow their knees and says, Your God is God. Hallelujah. My daddy fixing to show off. My daddy fixing to show off. The world, as I said, when you get aboard the ark, if you believe what and obey God and get aboard the ark, the ark risen as the flood came. As evil evil look like it's getting worse, you're going to be rising up higher. You be thinking the world is going is just terrible, but God's people is going to keep rising up, getting greater and greater and greater and greater. Glory! That's the picture language God is teaching you in this story of the Noah's Ark. When you aboard Jesus Christ, you will, when, even though evil tries to push its agenda, even though evil tries to look strong, God said, you aboard me, you will keep rising and rising and rising and rising until if they don't understand it and repent, you be the one, the only ones left above. See the picture language? As it would be Noah's and his, and his family. The only one that's left. You just stay with me. And I will show you things, my boy. Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9. says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. This is a gift. We're, we're, we're thinking if we ain't got diamond rings on our fingers or all this stuff, we, we, you know what the greatest gift someone could give to me, my kids give to me, you know, on my birthdays and, and Christmas, is to see him grow in Christ. You couldn't give me a better gift. You could buy me a limousine parked in front of my yard. So here he is, Daddy. And I look over and see their life. Take that thing back to where you got it from. Burn it. I want to see you grow in Christ. I want to see you believe in the God that can got that got all things and can do all things. I ask what I ask my perfect gift that I that you can give to me. Because that all temporal. And I don't want to take my God's gift that he gave to me, Jesus Christ, and say, hmm, he crucified for my sins. He was crucified for my adulteries and fornication. He was crucified, but that ain't good enough. I need a car today. What? Don't take it for granted. So you saying a car is better than the gift of life? Oh, yes, Lord, here we go. We're in football season. A championship ring, praise God, is better than the gift of God. Where well, you could take all your championships and go where the sun don't shine. I know what my Lord did. Now, nothing wrong with having things, but see the world society. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, oh, Lord. Whew. You know, back in the day, used to be in, you didn't have games on Wednesday nights. In America, they respected people with the church. Now I got practice and I got games on Wednesday night. Either you gonna be here to play or you ain't. They used to respect God's days. They used to expect, even though some of them didn't even go. But now he's like, Poof, God who? Well, that's going to fix in the change in the days ahead. Because God says, I'm going to get the attention, meaning himself. 
Some of your football stadiums that y'all going to be shouting in and screaming with somebody playing ball, even your little ones or your teenagers will be used for my revivals. My spirit will be flowing in your stadiums because this revival that is coming, there is not a place big enough to hold them all. Some of your theaters where New York was using it on, what's the name of that theaters, Lord? Up Broadway, thank you. Some of your the theaters in Broadway that you go there and you play acting so you can have a career. Nothing wrong to have a career in anything. If it's biblical, you know, some people got careers in porn. Some people got careers in just doing devilish stuff. But having a basic career, nothing wrong with that. But when you start taking having your careers more important than God himself, God says you, you have what you have then. Take your careers. Because I'm not going to be second to nobody. God is not going to be second to nobody. He's either first or he's none at all. Amen. And this is where God is trying to get America to understand. You better get your eyes upon the true door. The true person that can bring life back to your nations. Bring life back to your families. To bring life back to your bodies, your cells, personal self. That is the more main focus. Because he said, I'm going to bring glory and honor back to my son. He did not spill this blood for people to walk and trample in it. And for a nation to keep turning their back in it. And a nation passing laws that if you want to be a dog, you can be a dog. Just bark. No. No. Get aboard me. Get aboard me. Get aboard me, God says. Get aboard the ark. Because I'm fixing to deal with evil. I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to take it down. I'm fixing, to, I'm fixing to make it known. I'm fixing to shout it from the rooftops. Oh, hallelujah. It's coming down, people. It's coming down. Because some has crossed the line and called God himself. To the battlefield. For well, God said it's a dangerous thing to fall in the hand of a living God. It's a dangerous thing for a nation to turn his or her back upon the living God and curse him and say, God who? That's why he's given us this warning. Because God, the Lord, can bring, we bring number four out of Noah, that the Lord is patient. The Lord is patient. He desires for no one to perish. God did not destroy the earth in the days of Noah with a flood in a moment of anger. He didn't judge, he didn't ju put a judgment over the weakness in a knee-jerk reaction. He did it by giving them time to get aboard the ark, to get aboard Jesus Christ. Genesis 6 verse 3 tells us, The Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time. For they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. There's a key. There's the key of the ark being built. We'll give you 120 years to obey the warning. That's a long time, ain't it? But if you look at it in God's eyes, it's not that long. Because God's eyes says... A day to him is a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. A hundred and twenty years. First Peter 3 verse 20. 
Those who disobeyed God long ago. Look where this is in your New, in your New Testament now, folks. This is when Jesus time. Look where he said, those who disobey God long ago, when God waited patiently while Noah, what, was building his boat. That's where it comes back that God was very patient during the days of Noah. Very patient. And God has an all-seeing eye. He looks at the United States. He looks at the world. He looks at all of us. He's a eye. He, he never sleep or slumber. God sees us. He knows what you did last night. It ain't no use to you trying to hide it. That's why what you see up here is what you get. Because I can't lie to you, Jack. And God says, you want to lie to them? You got a problem because I know you lied. God sees all things. So you be yourself. Be yourself. Meaning, hey, God, that's why I tell you when I'm up here. I need God today. I need my Jesus now. And I'm going to stay aboard my Jesus. Because I know if I take one little look back to Solomon, I may turn into a block of salt. Most of y'all that have been in the Bible long enough know about Solomon and Gomorrah. And where, who was it? They, Lot, Lot, Lot and his wife was saved out of it. And they said, don't look back. Don't look back. But what happened? She turned around and turned into what? Pillow of salt. I don't want to turn. I want to stay focused. I don't want this, nothing in this world to make me turn back to. Because why? I don't want to get caught up in it because I know what's coming. And I know what God says. If you're on my board, if you're on with me, you ain't got to worry about that stuff that's coming. Don't fret about it. If you with me, <laughs> you're going to shine like a star at night. But if you look back, and not obey and walk around in this life like we're just going to, oh, this this will pass and we're just going to go live our own lives. That's a lie from the enemy. The life that you thought the United States was would never, would never go back to that. Because God is going to have revival in the United States. People is going to start seeking God in the United States. Where we all didn't, that's why on Saturdays and Sundays, where we always want to try to think about the ball game's going to change and everybody's going to, instead of bowing their knee because they ain't singing the national anthem right or disobeying the American flag, bow, you bow on the knee because the Lord came up on the scene. Because every knee's going to bow then. And every tongue will confess. See the difference? I hope you see the picture language that God is trying to use this old boy to get you to prepare for because life within itself, how we used to live it, even church in itself is going to change 100%. You're not going to come in and do a message and just walk in here the same way you came in or worse. The spirit of the living God is going to move upon the people who wants to him to move upon and you're going to be changed from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory <laughs> hallelujah to the lamb of god bless the name of the lord for he is worthy to be praised so god is very patient second peter 3 verse 9 god says the lord isn't really slow about his promises as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. But I've got a news flash for you. Everyone on the internet and everyone is in this place. I got a news flash for you. Time is running out. You think he's going to be patient for another 33 years? The Lord only knows. 
But I'm not going to wait for 33 years. I'm getting aboard now because I know what he has put in my spirit. I'm getting aboard Jesus Christ. No, he is being patient for your sake, my sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. You better make sure when you get the ballot this time who you vote for. Oh, God. Mm. Mm. I just told the Lord it's going across the Internet. He said, speak it. If you vote for the wrong two, you too shall be cursed. You too shall be cursed. That's why you better know who God wants. Yes, Lord. Do not get caught up, young people, on voting because I'm taunting you to I'll pay your debts off if you put me in. Do not put your check on that ballot for money. God's warning you now. Do not do it. Do not do it. Because God says, I'll make a way that he'll do it before he makes the ballot. Because I will, I mean, before the ballot comes up. Because that's what he's trying to do. Because God will take the devil to make people do what he tells them to do with taunting them and make them go through with it and then pushes them out of the way because he's used all things to the good to those who love him. What are you saying? God's going to make a way to pay your debts off. But you've got to be sensitive on that. Because when he does pay that, you know who's going to be paying it too. More of your taxes. But yet, you, God, well, I'm on this, Lord. I'm, I'm wrestling with the Lord in the spirit because it's hard on me to talk of this. Ah. The more you, you send billions and millions of dollars to a war that you would never win. Instead of doing the right thing here at home. Hmm. I'm sweating up here. I'm serious. This is different. I've said some things that the Lord is making my hair stand on the back of my neck. Jesus. As I said, God don't want no one to be destroyed. That's why preachers are going to have to start preaching. Teachers are going to have to start teaching. And quit worried about billing a group. You know, all we're here to, uh, most, some ain't. Most of America today is how many people that we can get into the seats. Just how many people we can get into seats. Uh, that's success successful. I'm only looking at how many people is really getting prospered in understanding the word of God like God wants to be understood and grow and live prosper, prosper in the word, not just money, in the word of God yes. while you're out there in the world beyond these four walls. As my pastor even said, it's easy to make a congregation. It's easy to fill these seats in the flesh. Give what people really want. <laughs> but if you need to know the truth and the, what the word of God and how God says the life is fixing to change and you don't want it to change, but your life is going to change, then you probably, some people, that is what we do. We have vacant seats because some come, some don't. But praise God, we got the internet that people that has the uh, legit excuses to see it. God ain't gonna, God ain't going to give let nothing, none of this, go down without having everybody that breathes an opportunity to get aboard the ark. He's not gonna let it go down until then. 
So God gave people time to repent and return to him. He gave the, the visible reminder through Noah's work on the ark. Day in and day out. Think about it. That an end was coming and they needed a way of escape. They needed a way of escape. Me and you need a way of escape from our sins and our disobedience and our ignorance. We need a way of escape as it would be back in the first lesson of the ark of last Sunday was a week ago where the first thing was we, God is the door. God is the door. He's the only way out. He's the only way he's going to ex you be able to escape from what's coming down the pipeline. So when the government and people stands before you and show proof of something and say, I have it right here in the affidavit. This is it. They kill, they steal, and they destroy. And you can look at it and say, burn it. It's a lie. Why? Because you have the no, no glory to God. You have the wisdom of God. It's a lie. Because the devil's going to br bring things to your eyes and say, look, you a counterfeit. Look. And that's where the Bible says you believe a lie and be damned. Then believe the truth and live. Right is right. Wrong is wrong no matter who we are. Peter had to repent. Even though when Jesus said, Peter, you'll forsake me three times for the rooster crows that you deny me. No, I won't. I'm going to worship you or follow you to the grave. That's why you can't argue with God. Ugh, Lord, what, you know what the first thing I probably, I can learn since I read that now. I said, when God tells me, Tim, you're done. Well, Lord, give me strength where I won't deny you, Lord. Help me to not to deny you, Lord. That'd be something I'll be saying. I said, no, I, won't. I got this, man. I need your strength, Father God, to know who's telling the truth and not telling the truth. I don't walk around with a, on a pedestal saying, I'm right, and I know I'm right. God, is this person telling the truth? Is this politician the, who you want? What are they saying? What's behind them? I could paint you a picture and make you see it in the, what's behind it? And it could be a devil himself behind it, camouflage as one of your loved ones. Why? I was talking with Brother Ship this morning, and uh, I was telling him that I seen demons, as he was telling me. And I said, I, they'll take on a form of a loved one and may try to make you believe that's who they are. And it's not them. This is why it pays to have the spirit of God. He's a counterfeit. And if we're stuck down here and, and without the rapture, which I'm planning on getting out of here with the rapture, but if you're stuck down here and you're not know the devil ain't coming to me. And I'm going to say the hundred, this might be my hundred times. The devil ain't coming with, to you with a pitchfork in his hand and a long tail. Obey me. He's going to put on a form of kindness, a form of what you're living in today. Follow me. And then before you know it, all you got to do is take the mark. All you have to do is this. He ain't coming into you with all that. I'm a, he's the devil. He's a counterfeit. Read your book. He talked out of both sides of his mouth. I do this for you, but yet I'm going to do this. He don't tell you the true person behind it. Oh, glory to God. 
And how many people will be deceived if we didn't have the real spirit of God inside of us to know that's a demon trying to talk to you to lay down your shield. And then when once we lay it down and say, ah, uh, we can wait another year. Once we lay it down, we'll be caught up in the flood. Think about that. God desires for us, all of us, to come to him through the gift of Christ. He longs to draw this world to himself so that many would be saved before the second coming of Christ. The Bible is clear. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. And if we have not allowed him to make ourselves ready, we too will be caught up and left behind. The Bible is clear about it. John 3, John 3, verse 16 through 17. Jesus himself speaking, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone, that means quit having this racist problem. A human being is a human being. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, they're, 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 they're different. They look different. He breathes. He's a human being. Blood is blood. Amen. As I said many times, an Iranian A positive blood will fit an American A positive blood. Amen. For he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. The only way that you are saved from the evil, the only way that you can make right decisions, the only way that you can have life and life more abundantly, the only way that you are going to be able to live in these days is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. There's no president without Christ can lead you out of what you're in. But if he or she will obey Christ, they will lead you back to the top. That's what our people say. Oh, I don't believe. God, if God want to use Ruth, as it was in the Bible, I vote for you, Miss Ruth. Woo, glory to God. I'm going to have to teach on free, really freedom. Americans, freedom thinking that you can be what you want to be. Lord, I need to go ahead and open that can of worms. Yeah, sir, I will. I will. I'm going to teach you on the kingdom of God as it would be with the United States freedom. Freedom in God's kingdom and freedom in the United States are totally two different opposites. Freedom does not mean that you can do what you want to do and say what you want to say when you want to say it to a point of going against God's word. That ain't freedom. When I say I'm free to mate with dogs and I want a law to mate with dog, that's not freedom. Thank you. That's pure perversion. That's, that's ignorance. And then you ain't got a man or woman that stand up and say, well, if you want to mate with a dog, you might more than welcome mate with a dog, but we're not going to pass the law that it's okay to mate with a dog. 
But if you want to go out and mate the dog in your own house, that's your business. But we're not passing it through our society that mating with dogs is okay. Wake up, America! That's not true freedom. The ark, number five, the ark offers you rescue from the flood. Jesus offers us rescue from the flood of sin. The ark in the day when Noah offered a rest, place of rescue from the waters. Today, God is saying, I am offering you a place of rescue from the flood of sin. A flood of disobedience from mankind that turned their back against me and that I cannot put up with them no longer. That's why I'm trying to tell you, watch it news medias watch it because some has done walk across the blood line and throw dirt in it i'm god woe unto you those of you that did that that's royal blood that's precious blood that did not have to spill. God did not have to come to rescue Tim. But he came because he loved Tim. And Tim ain't going to take it for granted, his love. Because my love towards him now I want it to be authentic, if I'm pronouncing that right. I want it to be true, because he knows my heart before I even talk to him about anything. The ark is a place of rescue from the flood. Jesus, all. 2 Peter 2, verse 5. Well, we got a long way to go, ain't we? We'll do it Wednesday. 2 Peter, we'll stop with this. 2 Peter 2, verse 5 says, And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his life. Noah warned the world of God's righteousness, judgment. So, King James Version, I believe it says, God, Noah preached to the world about the flood. God, Noah warned the world about God's righteousness judgment, so God protect Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly with a vast flood. Genesis 7, verse 16. A male and female each enter just as God hath commanded Noah. And this is the key that I want you to get to here too. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. Though when the Lord closed this door, it's too late. When they all got aboard the ark, God, Noah warned, Noah plead. And then they even see Noah build the ark. What kind of big ship are you building? You nuts. There ain't even a cloud in the sky. But they ignored and ignored and ignored and ignored and ignored and ignored. But when God says, now go, get aboard. It ain't your movie that you see Noah and his sons grabbing the rope, pulling it and closing the door. It, wasn't, it ain't your movies that you see. The Bible says, then God closed the door. God used his right hand to close the door. When he said, it is over. <laughs> Time is up. You could go beat on that door. You could have ran to that door. 
you could have plead with that door. You could have asked that door, please, 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 please. But when God says, my time is up, that's it. It's over. It's done. Nothing Tim can make him open the door again. God, I'm so sorry I didn't listen to Noah. God, I'm so sorry. Please open the door. My God, the guff is rising. Help me, Jesus. Please. The door is shut. It ain't open. That's a picture language, ain't it? That's some, think about that. Well, God would never do that. Read your word. Read what the book of Revelation. Oh, yes, Lord. Listen to the rain. Is this the flood? <laughs> think about it. We're closed up in the ark. God shut the door providing safety for Noah and his wife. Oh, yes, Lord. Now, okay, God, I will. Now, if this was, who's not with you? Which loved ones is not with you? Think about this. Now, I know in spirit they're, they're, the people that's, that's out in the, have to work or whatever right now. But think about this. Give you something to think about. Who's not with you? Who's got caught up out in the world? Would you would have prayed different? Would you would have talked to them different? Would you would have gave them some instructions? Shut. Now it's over. Think about it. Give you something to think about. What will we change? What will we do different if we really knew this was the it it was done because as I said God closes the door when God said time is up it is up Revelation 3 verse 7 through 8 write this letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. God himself. The one who has the key of David. What he opens. No one can close. And what he closes. No one can open. And when God has the door open for mankind to come to him, there's no devil of hell can close that door. There will be a, no devil of hell can stop the revival. There won't be a devil of hell that can slow it down. When God has got the door open, you could pass laws. You could try to manipulate people saying, oh, you're going to be okay. But God says, oh, glory, when the door is open, no man can close it. But when I close the door, no man is going to be able to open it again. He says, I know all the things you do, and I have opened the door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, you, yet you obeyed my word and not deny me. What are you saying? If we stay focused upon the living God and not get caught up with all this trash that the enemy's trying to put into your lives, trying to make you believe a lie and be damned, trying to put pressure on you and fear on you because of this, that, and the other, but stay aboard God's ark called Jesus Christ, you cannot be denied and you will be protected and you will flourish. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be the lender and not the bar. You will be my people and I will be your God. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. God shut the door providing safety for Noah and his family. Jesus also shut was shut inside the tomb after his death. 
But when the tomb was rolled away by God himself, Christ arose from the grave that could never have been kept him enclosed. His power is too great to be buried. He rose victoriously, conquering sin and death. God's great power was demonstrated over Noah by putting him in the ark and his family by rescuing him from the ark of the days. And that same power that provides safety to God's people that through Jesus Christ that conquered sin in death and he raised from Christ, he raised Christ from the grave is still active today. Hallelujah. And I'm closing with Romans 8, verse 11 through 13. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And this is what I want you to leave with. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, especially if you're a child of God. The same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. How, oh, yes. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. That means I ain't got to fear. That means no death can take me out, Jack. There's no disease. Hallelujah. That don't mean for me to go lick the disease. If God don't tell me to lick the disease, I ain't going to lick the disease, all right? But I tell you, there's no weapon form against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. If God be for me. So therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what his sinful nature urged you to do. So you don't have an excuse to say why I'm not serving God with my whole heart. We shouldn't have an excuse that we're not, why we can't, Praise him. Why we can't tell him how much we love him. Do you know? Do you know? Action speaks louder than words. I could tell my wife I love her every day. But don't show her. She's going to say, you crazy, man. So same way with God. We speak with our mouths. We love you, Lord, but hey, I got something else up that I love more. And I'll come to you when I, they can't open the door or myself can open the door. God should be the everything of your life, the main focus of your life. Get your mind off the riches of this country and our glorious mansions and condos. And get your mind and eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, hallelujah. I have did what you told me to do. I have allowed your spirit to flow. Father, yes, I have not completed it yet. But Father God, you know so much, some people start choking. But God, you are a graceful God. You are a merciful God. You are a loving God. But for those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the sovereign Lord is saying. Get aboard, Jesus Christ. Get aboard. Get aboard. There's no government that's going to be able to protect you. There's no nuclear bomb that's going to be able to protect you. What the devil has in store, the only one can you get protection with is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So I did it, Lord. And Father, I speak over these people from the oldest to the youngest that they will know you more, that they will hear your voice and hearken to you, Lord, so that they will be aboard Jesus Christ, so they will have a place of an escape, so they will have a place of protection, so they will have a place of healing, so they will have a place of prosperity mentally, physically, and spiritually. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody said, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. If you ain't brought your tithes and offers, please do so.